So uh, I think being a Tech Toronto event, we would be remiss if we didn't have a digital component to how our senses sell us. So I'm really excited to introduce Jenny Mabley, who leads uh, Consumer and Shopper Insights uh, in practice at Nielsen. Um, and so she'll be kind of telling you guys a little bit about Smart Store, um, which is a great way to weave the offline and online experience and really help brands and retailers better understand the consumer experience in store. Um, and how they can leverage this technology really to implement a better experience. So, Jenny, without further ado. Hello, everyone. So, we are using our senses to help do market research. And that's what Smart Store is really all about. So, here's some fun facts for you to start with 70%. 70% of shoppers are trying to actually spend less, but we as you know, manufacturers and retailers actually want them to spend more. We also know that shoppers are making 56 shopping trips on average in a, in a, in a month. That's every time they pull out their Visa card. That could be coffee, could be grocery shopping, and they're adding more and more channels to that. But we know typically people aren't spending more money. So what's happening is shoppers are becoming less loyal. They're spending their dollars uh, around in different places. We also know that 54% when they go in the store are on autopilot. So they go into the store and they just pick up what they normally pick up. That's probably okay if you're a number one brand in the market or maybe number two, but if you're not, you need to be thinking about ways that I'm going to interrupt that shopper in the store. So all this to say that shoppers are complex and they're changing and we need to figure out ways to understand the shopper more. Another piece of information is what they actually say through regular custom research that we do is not always what they end up doing when they're actually in the store. So what they say and what they do are not always the same thing. But what if? What if you had a tool that you could use to actually test a future without having to actually put it into a real store understand the real shopping behavior at the same time, and then only implement in store things that are gonna have a positive outcome. That would be great. So introducing Smart Store, because that is a tool that can predict the future. And really you use this and you can't or you don't want to actually use a real store. Because what you can do is keep it away from the eyes of any competitors. It is also something that we can look at future states without having to put it into an actual store. So you, you know, sky's the limit. We can build anything in, in a digital world. There's no store disruption. So we don't need retailer permission to go into a store and build something that's a future state to test it. We can build anything. We don't need their permissions. We don't disrupt anything. And then research consistency as well. So. You know, if we're in the middle of doing some sort of store test, quite often maybe a new promotion came out or maybe they changed the shelf set in the middle of the test that you're doing and there's no consistency and it gets really harder to look at the real impact from the test that you're doing. But all of that goes away when you're doing a digital environment. So what is Smart Store? We are using gaming technology to do market research. Literally, we are using headsets, like you see on the screen that you would use for gaming, and building environments like a store, um, liquor store, grocery store, convenience store, we can build anything. And we are building the environment, we have control, the way it looks today, and we can build a future state and create a test scenario. We bring people in, so central location testing, we send them on a shopping mission. We say, you know, shop as you normally shop for this category. We can see how much they actually convert in their baskets in the control panel, and then we can see how much they convert in the test panel. So we could test almost anything and see whether you're gonna have a positive impact or not. And it's fun, and we call it immersive. We're not calling it re a virtual reality. We're calling it immersive because we know 
from research that we've done that when they put the headset in, they feel like they're in the store. They act like they're in the store. They're shopping like they're in the store. So why would people want to do this type of research? Think about different merchandising practices that they could have, different planograms, um, different displays that they might want to look at, different point of sale material in the store. Um, anything that you could put in the store, we can now test to see whether there will be a positive conversion at the end of the day. There's also eye tracking in the headset, so we can actually see are they even noticing it, and how long did they fixate on these different materials in the store. Really, the, it, it incorporates so many different types of research all in one tool. So I mentioned eye tracking, but we're bringing people in to a central location. So it really is qual work as well as quant work. So the headset is picking up all of this passive data, you know, where they're walking, what are they seeing, what are they picking up, what are they turning around, what are they putting in their basket? all kinds of information that the headset just constantly picking up. So that's quant data. But we have people there, so after the, they're done their shopping mission, we set them down and we ask them about that shopping experience. We saw you picked up that product and then you put it back on the shelf. Why did you do that? We can actually even play it back so they can see it, what their behavior was and ask them why they did it. We can ask questions about their decision making process, so was it brand important? Was the packaging important? Like what things actually came to mind while you were doing that shopping trip? So lots of different things depending on the research objectives that we can ask in those exit interviews. Eye tracking I mentioned, it really is, you know, think about them in the store and we can see how they're walking around that whole aisle or the whole store depending on what the objectives is. So we are picking up the path that they're walking, um, how they're visually shopping. Are they shopping vertical, horizontal? What is it that the way that they're actually shopping? So I mentioned we can do playback and probes. So again, that behavior of what they're doing, we can actually see what they interacted with, what did they actually convert, play it back to them, ask them questions. I wanted to show these two pictures here down at the bottom because, you know, when they get in the headset, that's a bit of a sample of what it looks like. They look really real, and there's a combination of 3D items that they can pick up and turn around and put in their basket. We also can just do what we call wallpaper, so it looks completely real, the entire store. Everywhere they're looking, including the ceiling, the walls, everything is built to look like it does in a real store. That's it.